uh, to try the play out, and here I am without a third act. And so uh, I went home and I spent three days, three nights working on a new third act, finally got the third act uh, into some kind of shape, which I knew was a lot better than the other one. We sat down at the table again. We broke, uh, broke the rehearsal and Mike said, let's sit, sit down and read the new third act. And we did, and it was worse than the first one. That's when the real panic sets in because you say, I have no place else to go in my mind. There's no one who's going to call me and say, oh, well, here's what you do, kid. Um, I mean, generally, somebody who would read the first two acts and say, well, you sure know how to write comedy, so you're going to be able to fix this up. But I didn't know how to do it. And so we took a train to Wilmington, Delaware, and it took three and a half hours. And Mike Nichols and I spent those three and a half hours talking out the possibilities of a new third act. And we hit on some ideas, and I thought, maybe I could make them work. And so Mike went on to rehearse. Now, we only had three days to set up technically, set the play up, and then do our first preview. And so I stayed up that whole day and that whole night, and I wrote a new third act. And I knew it was rough. And I brought it into Mike, and uh, he sat at breakfast and read it. And we were in this big dining room in the hotel. And Mike is a wonderful, wonderful audience. And the, the guffaws were heard around the room. Uh, and then he turned to me and he said, it's not there yet, but it's a promise. It's better than the other things. So I said, well, what do we do? Wait till Boston and I get it right and we'll put it in. And he said, well, I'll tell you at the, uh, at the rehearsal today. So 20 minutes later, we met at the rehearsal and Mike said, Neil has written a new third act. He says, it's not all there, but it's better than what we have. So the actor said, well, good. And then we sat down and read it and they heard that it was a lot better. And they said, so what do we do, put it in Boston? He said, no, we're going to put it in in Wilmington. And they couldn't believe this. They said, Mike, we have to do three acts. Two, two of the acts we know fairly well. The third act, we won't know at all. And he says, well, what's the point in doing a bad act well when you can do a good act badly, which will get better? Uh, which was reasonable enough, except to an actor. And George, uh, not George, uh, uh, Walter Matthau said, no, I'm not doing that. He says, I'm too professional. I'm not going to go out there and make a fool of myself. So Mike said, but Walter will learn nothing about the play if we just go back and do this deadly third act. So Walt said he, he would take the script and he would try to sleep on it that night, which he literally did. He read it over and over again, and then he put it under his pillow, hoping that the words somehow would get past the feathers and uh, through the silk, not silk, they were far from silk in that hotel, into his head, and he came down to rehearsal the next morning, almost with tears in his eyes. He says, I can't do it, I can't learn it. So Mike, being the brilliant director he is, said, okay, Walter, don't worry. The other actors will do the new third act. You can do the old third act. So we had to laugh at that, and he said, okay, I'll do my best, but I'm gonna tell, you know, on the first night audience after the, the curtain calls, he said, don't blame me for that crap in the third act. I didn't write it. Um, we did it, and it was surprisingly good. I mean, it faltered, and the critics said it faltered, and the act was uh, sagging, but it was the beginning of something. So I, I stopped going to rehearsals and stayed every day and kept working and working until we got to Boston with the play, and we opened. And again, the critic from the, New York, from the uh, Boston Globe, I think it was, uh, Elliot Norton, great critic. Uh, the headline of the piece, which I found out later, that critics never write. It's always the editorial staff. So the editorial staff reads his review, and then it says, oh, for a third act. And I'm saying, what about, yay, for the first two acts? Give us a break. Give us a little encouragement. Um, but at any rate, uh, the play was a big enough hit to start off with that we packed the house every night. And then Elliot Norton called me. Uh, actually, I was on one of his uh, television shows, and he said, you know, I have a suggestion for the third act. Why don't you bring back those Pigeon Sisters? They're really good. And it's like a neon light went on over my head. And I said, of course, the Pigeon Sisters. So I went and I wrote um, a piece for the Pigeon Sisters, another scene for them. And we laughed so hard at rehearsals that Mike said, we can't put this on the stage because we will be accused of manslaughter. People will be carried out of the theater, dying from laughter. And so we did get it on that night and did not get a single laugh in the Pigeon Sisters scene. And they were wonderful, the two actresses. And so I walked out dejected again, realizing how difficult this playwriting business is. 
You think you have it, and like Quicksilver, it's gone. And so I said, what went wrong, Mike? And he said, they don't like what's happening in the scene. They don't like the turn of the story. So he says, if you could find another thing that they can relate to and understand, then maybe the laughs would come easier. So knowing that, I went home, and it took me a couple of days, and I did it, and I gave it to them. Now we didn't laugh so much at rehearsal. But then we put it in that night, and we got huge laughs, even when the lines weren't funny, because the audiences now were enjoying the sense of the comedy, the progressive progression, rather, of, of the play itself, uh, the characters coming into their own and learning something about themselves. And uh, so the third act still never lives up to the other two acts, but um, the play is the biggest hit I ever had and ever will have. Here it is 35 years later, I think, and the play is doing as well as it ever did.